Good morning. This is Amy Pochek with Amy Pochek Creative, and today we are doing yet another episode of Extraordinary Stories with Extraordinary People. And the extraordinary person I have with me today is this guy sitting right next to me. This is Mike Thackeray. Um, before we get into the details of who Mike is and the story he's going to share with us, I just want to um, kind of tell you a little bit about what we do with Extraordinary Stories with Extraordinary People. Um, first of all, this is the first live, like, together, um, because Mike is local to St. Pete. So I was like, let's just do this live and together. So this will be a little bit u more unique than the ones that we normally do, because a lot of times we're in different locations. But we'll be in the same location today. Um, but Extraordinary Stories with Ex Extraordinary People was started because I believe everybody has a story, and that story needs to be shared with the world. Because we can't just wait on somebody else to um, to be vulnerable and share their experiences and their wisdom and just because we feel insecure or because we feel like our story is not enough. I believe that that's a farce, that everybody has a powerful story to share. And one of the things that I want to do with my business and with my platform is share those extraordinary stories with you guys. And hopefully um, you guys connect to Mike, you um, reach out, share your story with him. That's why we're doing what we're doing is connecting each other based on our stories because that's what makes it worth living, makes it worth having human connection. So today we're going to jump into something really exciting. As you can see, the title of this is called Fulfillment Found in Purpose. So um, I met Mike, um, I don't know how long ago, probably about a month ago. Not Maybe. long ago. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's been recent. Me and Mike are working together because Mike is writing a book and it is shaping up to be a really phenomenal book. I'm working with him, um, helping him ghostwrite the book. So it's going to be... Um, it's going to be an extremely phenomenal book because he has an amazing, amazing story. So he's local here to St. Pete and he has a lot of experience doing what he does. So I'm going to throw the ball to Mike and this is going to be a little bit different because we're going to be talking to each other, but we're also going to be talking to you. This is a conversation. So if you have questions, if you have comments, please comment while we're talking. Um, but we're going to look at you and look at each other and just have a great conversation. So Mike. Tell us about yourself. Who are you? Um, what do you do? And any other relevant information you want to share with us? Yes, I love talking about myself. Thank you. So, uh, <laughs> well, first of all, thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you for your time, too. And, and hope we can add some value. You're absolutely right. It is. Uh, everyone has a story and everyone has value. And, and so my name is Mike Thackeray, as she said. Uh, so I'm born and raised in St. Petersburg, Florida, right here. I'm a native. Um, um, there's, I'm an old generation native, not like my kids growing up here. We're, there's a, we're a dying breed, if you will, or a growing breed. But um, yeah, border race here. All my family is here. I've been married 14 years to a, a beautiful Polish woman, Agnieszka. She's my best friend. Uh, she absolutely holds the string to my balloon um, as I'm always drifting. Uh, so so uh, yeah, we have two beautiful kids, an eight-year-old and a five-year-old. You know, uh, again, I'm born and raised here, but uh, you know, I grew up in like a middle-class family. Um, really, you know, my parents are still married. They're wonderful people. They're here in St. Petersburg as well. I have a brother and a sister and we grew up in a loving home, not a perfect home as nobody did. But, uh, you know, I, I knew and not to get too far into it now, but I knew, um, I, I guess I realized, which I think we all need to realize. And that's what we're trying to trying to get people to do. Um, I realized early, um, like I had a I had a purpose. I didn't know exactly what it was, but I had a purpose and I had a drive to always do something better and and to produce for other people at a higher level um so it's really it's just landed me in some unique situations i look forward to talking about a pivot point today that is huge and and the, i think the best part about it is i'm in the middle of it so it's, it's an opportunity to share like whilst i'm, I'm experiencing it so. yeah yeah so mike jump right into my next question Th this is a, a major question that um i like to focus on when we do these is that everybody has that moment right this this moment in their life where like almost like a two roads type of moment and something really pivotal happens that changes the trajectory of your life. So Mike, I want you to think about that pivotal moment that um, everything changed. What you thought you were going to do, the road you thought you were going to go down ended up being a completely different road. So kind of set us up what's happening around this time before the pivotal moment. Who are you? Where are you at? What are you doing? And sure. then what makes you take a different road or what, what is the, how does the pivotal moment start breaking down in your life? Yeah, sure. I, 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 absolutely. So, so, um, uh, you know, I, I guess I'd probably have to go back to set this up. I'd probably have to go back to like, uh, maybe a little over a decade ago. 
and I had dropped out of junior college and I was uh, parking cars here at the Benoit, right? So I'm parking cars, I'm, 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 you know, I was there for about four years. I was, I had a young marriage. Uh, I was young, no kids, but I had a little mortgage and, and we're trying to get, get things going. And uh, I just knew, like I knew I had more. That's what I was saying. There's like a common theme in my life that I've, I'm sure many have, have experienced too. Uh, it might be right now that like I had more to provide and more to give. Um, so, you know, fast forward, I quit my job parking cars and my wife said, what are you going to do? And I said, I, I don't know. Like I have no clue. <laughs> Wait, pause that. Cause that's my favorite phrase. I don't know. How comfortable were you before that saying that phrase? I don't know. Yeah. So, so, so I was, I was comfortable. I was very comfortable in a sense that, um, uh, I had a steady income, a steady job, a steady benefits, right? Yeah, I, yeah. I get that whole package, if you will. But um, um, there was um, consistency in my life, and I, I knew where we were going. So uh, I would say once I acted and did say those words, of, I don't know, like genuinely, I don't know, um, it was relieving. It also brought on anxiety and, and, yeah, yeah. and fear <laughs> yeah. and all that, but it was like, it was, and, but it was professing it, like saying it to the world and right. saying, I actually don't know what I'm going to do. Um, that was, uh, and most importantly, saying it to my wife, which, you know, again, she believes in me sometimes, yeah. you know, so. so. Uh -huh. That's beautiful. Yeah. So now you have these two roads that are before you and you say, you quit the job and your wife says, what are you going to do? You say, I don't know. Okay. So then what follows after the, I don't know statement? Yeah. So, so, uh, uh, lots of prayer, lots of anxiety, short, short lived depression. No, honestly, like it was, it was a tough period of time because I didn't know, but what I did was I was searching, like I was constantly acting and searching and acting and searching for what was next. Yeah. Um, so I, I have this concept that if I go, that if I, it's kind of just my system that if I, if I act, I can succeed or fail, but it doesn't matter what I do. I can learn from that and then I can move forward. So, so, and, and reapply that new information from a success or a failure. So I learned early on that I needed activity. Like I was not a guy that sits and plans and writes it all down. I do a little bit, but yeah. I need activity so I can gather data and then go. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. so I'm going through and I mean, I ended up, you know, I, I had to produce some sort of income. My wife was making about 27,000 a year at the time. And, and, um, um, you know, I had to do, so I started delivering pizzas. Yeah. Um, um, I bought a lawnmower. This was kind of the big, I bought one lawnmower and we, and we, we, you know, I guess fast forward a decade, we employed, you know, a hundred families and, you know, multi-million dollar company. Yeah. Um, um, uh, that's a fast, fast forward. Yeah, yeah, I was about to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a fast, fast forward. But so yeah. let's, let's rewind a bit because, yeah, so the okay. ending is after the I don't know and the action and the, you know, the failure upon yeah. failure, you end up getting to this point of owning a multi-million dollar business. Yeah. Um, but before we get there, let's go with, like, your pizza delivery driving because yep. I know some people, like, when it comes to knowing they have more and they want more, it's like the idea is when I make the decision and say, I'm going to do something better for my life. The thought is it's automatically going to fall into place. Like everything, yeah. I'm going to get my dream job. I'm going to start yeah. making money immediately. But you went from, I don't know, to delivering pizzas, which for some could be mentally draining. But how was that for you? Yeah. So, 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 um, difficult. Uh, I was young as well. I still am young. I'm 36, but, yeah. but I was, I was, I was younger. I was in my twenties and I'm like, I, I don't have, um, I didn't have experience. Right? right. So I didn't have the experience to even have patience. Right. Right. I didn't even, I've never been through the process the process of things not falling into place. Right. So I didn't even have the wisdom or the patience to apply that experience. So I had to go through it. So I tend to, I was stumbling all over myself, honestly, a lot. Yeah. Um, but I learned every time I stumbled or failed or whatever you want to call it. But, but, um, it, it was a difficult process. It remains a difficult process. Um, because I mean, when we go out into the unknown, like the, I don't know, um, it is inevitable that we're going to fail. But I think that the challenge and the struggle and the fact that things aren't falling into place, a lot of people think that that is, that is guaranteed. That is not the right thing that God doesn't want this to happen. Sure. Yeah. Doors can close. I get it. But, um, but you have to look at the, the, your, your life as holistic, like look at the period of time, look at this period of time and extract the common things. And those things, that's the data you're looking for. Does that make sense? Like, yeah, yeah. like, so early on, I didn't know that. So I was, so it was difficult, dude. I'm like, I said, I mastered 
running through brick walls with my forehead, right? Like, <laughs> like I'm like, no, I'm not taking no for an answer. Sorry, I can't. Even if it's the wrong thing, I'm going yeah. to go this direction. So, right. Um, so that was that was super difficult. You know, it was stressful. I lost hair. Yeah. I, I lost weight, which I didn't have weight to lose. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, um, I lost money. You know, uh-huh. uh, it was difficult. It was difficult. It was, it was so, difficult. so obviously along the way, you face a lot of failures to get to the the end result. And I know a little bit about your story. So you went from pizza delivery guy, yep. and then what did you do next after mm-hmm. that? Mm-hmm. What was the line of yeah? So I so I activity. Sure, sure, sure. So I bought a mower. I actually got a business partner. My business partner, Chris Eastman, awesome guy, great friend of mine. And, um, um, and we were both on the bottom. So we, we just went and knocked on doors and called people and, and basically said, I think we're going to build a landscape company. All I knew at that point was I was, I had the, not everyone does, but I had the, um, the unique skills of an entrepreneur, yeah. right? Not just a business owner, but like, it was really my skill set. I wasn't an operator. I wasn't purely sales. I was kind of like, um, I, I, I can get anything done. I'm yeah, going to yeah, get yeah. it done. I can yeah. will things into existence. Right. Yeah. So, 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 you know, just going through the process of, you know, knocking on doors and, and learning every single day, you know, we went from residential to commercial and we wanted to, to get into, um, um, you know, we, we didn't know where we wanted to go. We claimed certain things, yeah. but we were just more so figuring it out as we were speaking it. And, and I think our biggest strength as a, as a team, Chris and I was, was look, we, we didn't care what other people thought. We were going to go and fail and then learn from it and move on, you know? Yeah. Um, but, I mean, that was really, really our, our greatest success. But I have to tell you, if I can, so, 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 okay. So, so, so that is actually not my greatest pivotal moment, right? Oh, okay. So, you just gave us a tease. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> and, but it's important to know, like, it's important to know because it's so common. Uh, there's a common thing here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, I, um, uh, Fast forward 11 years that I was in that business 11 years and last year in April, my business partner bought me out. Okay. So mm-hmm. we're great friends and it was, a, it was an awesome transaction. Um, but the previous, the two years before that, I was a really, really comfortable person, right? Like mm-hmm. I was, I was getting really good at golf and yeah. uh, which I love golf. Golf's awesome. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Uh, um, I was getting really good at golf. I was, I was, um, I didn't have a lot of responsibility. Like we built this, we built the dream. We built a system, like a company that would operate on its own, not perfectly, but operate yeah. on its own and feed us. And we didn't really have to be there. Um, my business partner, like he was, he was, he was really doing well. Actually, we actually put him where he was really running the day to day and he was doing great. And I was just unfulfilled. Like I was underutilized my talents and my God given ability and my God given purpose. Um, was not being utilized. And I was really comfortable though. Yeah. I was like, you know, I'm the guy on the island sipping my ties. Yeah. You know, like, uh, but I'm 34, 35 at the time. And I'm like, man, you, you, the one thing I realized was you, you do not grow in comfort. Comfort is a, an opera is like a tool for us to refresh and then to go forward. Right. But mm-hmm. there's not growth in comfort. Generally speaking, the growth is when things are hard and you struggle and you have an uphill battle and you're challenged and you have to meet new people and you have to grow something or you have to produce something. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was not producing. So yeah. um, that, that was a big challenge, yeah. challenge for me. I have to pause you there because, that, okay, he's so, you're so awesome. No, he is so awesome. To, because because I have to pause what you just said because honestly, like, okay, so you were at the point of like living the dream, right? The yeah, thing that everybody right. pursues. Yep. You took the unconventional path you went through like a lot of activity, failure, growth, yeah. and then you did it. You had the multi-million dollar business that yeah. ran on its own. You yeah. built it to a certain number of employees. You're getting, you know, making decent money, I would assume. Yeah. Being able to play golf, you're not having to go and do the mundane day to day. And you could have rolled that out yeah. for many, many more years. Sure. But instead of doing that, you realize that that really isn't the dream, that the dream is essentially fulfillment in being Mike Thackeray. Yeah. And in that environment, you realize you had like hit a, hit a wall and saying, there's more again, you're at that yeah. moment again, there's more for me. And the more for me, maybe isn't necessarily making a whole lot more money or, you know, cause you've already done that and yeah. you've already built the business. You've already done what people are still pursuing. So then you decide that you're going to, that your partner's going to buy you out and you start from scratch again. Yeah. How in the hell? <laughs> 
I'm, I can't be the only one that thinks this. Like, how in the hell do you yeah. make that jump again when you realize you could stay here in what you say comfort, or you can jump again and go into this uncomfortable space of activity, growing, failing, and doing yeah. it all over again. Why? Yeah, so so um, uh, I am thankful that I am not, um, I've had little and I've had what I think is, is a lot, is plenty. It is a good, good word. I've had plenty and it's better to have plenty. I really like plenty. Yeah, okay? yeah. Really, really human, <laughs> but I am th very thankful and my wife is the same way. I'm very thankful that we're blessed to not really be driven by monetary things by money we like experiences like everyone but we would much rather let me be clear we'd much rather have money <laughs> yeah yeah um and partly because we realized that we were it does not fulfill us nor does it define us um and, and i mean that to the core not like on a, a nice little headline i mean yeah. to my core and the people that really know me and you're getting to know me yeah, yeah. That, that truly is is not uh the big motivator for me is money um what I wanted to do is I wanted to, I love investing in other people. Yeah. Like I love, I love pouring into other people's lives and helping them understand that they are valuable. They are created for purpose on purpose. And that is purely, and I think we can do that. Business is just my platform. Business yeah. is my sport. Business gets, gets attention. It gets me to talk to all of you, my success, our success in business, yeah, yeah. my wife and I, but, but, um, uh, but the true, I finally understood that, really my purpose was the people, right? It was the people. And I could have stayed at, don't get me wrong, I could have stayed at Fieldstone. Fieldstone's the name of the landscape company. I could have stayed there and um, um, and, and fulfilled my purpose, I think, I mm -hmm. think. But what I knew was, and this is the how to, right? What I knew 100% was that I only produce, excuse me, I produce when I, at my highest level of production, when I have to produce. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't have to. And I'm not saying I'm not disciplined enough to make myself, but I'm telling you, I, I'm naturally lazy. Like I'd rather yeah. like I don't have to, then yeah, why yeah. would I? Uh -huh. So so the whole purpose to making that transition to starting over again. So my partner bought my fifty percent and and I went from that push all that. My cell phones were paid for, my wife's cell phones. I, I haven't paid for gas in you know eight, nine years. I mean, it was, it was, it was all cared for. I was making a healthy income, all that, um, all that went away in one day. Right. Yeah. And, and the next day it was like, okay, sure. We did it. We, we cashed some equity, but it cost us to live. And literally we had zero income. Like now yeah. you have to, okay, Mike, go, you know? Yeah, and yeah. of course, and you know, so here's the common theme is I said to uh, my wife, this is what I want to do. And we prayed about it. And we have mentors and, and friends that help us. But, um, um, you know, I, she said, what are you going to do? And I said, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I have no clue. I have no clue. Not many people can handle saying it or hearing it. Because for some reason, a lot of us, um, before we take jumps in our lives, yeah. it's like you have to have certainty. Yeah. But it yeah. sounds like you thrive off of uncertainty yeah. in yeah. the yeah. journey itself. She, she married, my wife married a crazy, crazy man. Uh, <laughs> uh, but, but I'm not saying I enjoy it. Right. I, I don't, I'm not saying I enjoy the pain and the struggle and the anxiety and, of not knowing. Yeah. Um, but I am, I am definitely a man of faith um, that is helpful for me. Yeah. Um, I, am, I am also uh, surrounded and supported by like some really, really good friends. Yeah. Um, and, um, in, including and especially my best friend, which is my wife. Yeah. So, and, and I think our, and she's my true business partner, you know, our, our uh, um, yeah, the process, I guess now knowing and understanding that the process is the most valuable part, even though we fight and kick and struggle in it. So it's kind of like, I just forced myself into the process. Yeah. Uh, and now I have to, and it, it's, this is a terrible analogy, but I'll tell you, yeah, let me hear. I take cold showers. And I know a lot of people do it, but it is such a mental game for me. It's like I force myself into discomfort yeah. and, and I, and I come out like, dude, I've got this. Like I got this <laughs> yeah, and yeah. it's such a, such a small little micro yeah. cosm, but it's like, it's like I can uh, produce in that. And I look back and I'm like, yeah, this is better for me. You know, yeah. this is better for me. And the art, the process I've put myself through in, in life and in business is, yeah. is the same. So. I know that um, some of us, some of us struggle with um, when we're taking unconventional paths or making decisions that um, maybe don't make sense to us yeah. and others. 
think a lot of times we struggle with the noise that comes from around us, from mm-hmm. people we love, from mm-hmm. colleagues. How did you, like, what were some things being said to you during that process, and how did you handle the opinions of others? Yeah, so that's a, that's great. So um, the first thing that comes to mind is, is the opinion of few is what really mattered to me. Mm-hmm. So I have, I, I, you know, as they say, if you want to, um, um, if, if, uh, if you want a friend, be a friend, right? Yeah. So, so I and them have been working on our friendships and our relationships, and we've been through tough stuff. We've been through deaths and births, you know, like um, uh, over the last probably decade of my life, and some of them go back to childhood, but in the last decade of my life, we've been building deep, deep friendships. And that's really, I really only care about their opinion. Yeah. I, I value an expert that I don't know, and, and, um, and there's a lot of people that know a lot more than me that I don't know, and I will listen, and I'll read a book and listen to their opinions and yeah. their experience. Um, but the first thing I did was realize, here's my core, like, here's my core, and this is who I'm going to listen to. And I would actually seek them, sometimes directly, like, what do you think about this? But sometimes it'd be passive. I'd talk about it, and I'd, yeah. I'd get them to kind of, you know, speak their mind, and, and well, and that's, that's that I know they're going to do. So, um, uh, and then, you know, I mean, it's, if I didn't have that, it would be tough, because I'd be listening to the masses. I'd be like, and I'm not... So I'm not saying my friends are all, but that core group of friends are all exactly like me. That's not, my wife is not a risk taker, Yeah. like not a risk taker at all. She's like super conservative and, and she, again, she holds the string to my balloon and Uh I'm just going away and she keeps me grounded. Right. Excuse me. I ask for a longer string all the time (laughs) and and, uh, uh, more slack. So, so, uh, but these people are, um, they know me because we've had time. So if I get off of me, they'll let me know. Yeah. Very quickly, they'll let me so know. So key. Yeah. I think that's so key too with, um, yeah, with just general feedback because sometimes we take advice from other people who don't know us or who give us advice operating in a sense of fear or their own insecurities, yeah. and we own those. Like I know for me, sometimes I'll get people will make comments to me, but they process life differently than I do. Oh. Some people aren't gonna jump and quit yeah. their job and do something else. Some people aren't going to be entrepreneurs and that's okay because everybody's not meant to walk the same yeah. path. Yeah. So I think having, I think that's so key. What you said is that when you're listening to feedback, make sure those people really know who you are and are trying to protect the, um, the beauty of you and not who they think you should be and sure. not what they're trying to control you to sure. be. They're letting you be you, but they're also kind of keeping you in the boundaries of that so that you don't veer off your path right and and get off to our weaknesses you're that's articulated so well you should be a writer oh thank you so so so, um yes and and the other side of that uh, to add on to that is knowing who they are yeah so if i'm invested in them and i have a friendship with them and i know like i'll give my wife as a for instance i know she's conservative yeah i know she's she's not a big risk taker she wants to calculate and let's see she's a saver not a not a spender or an investor right yeah and which is a beautiful balance but so I'll go to her knowing that perspective. So she knows me, yeah. I know her. And it's the same way with my other, my other four friends is, is I know them. So I know, I know uh, their risk tolerance. I know their perspective. I understand when they give me an opinion or a thought or a, an experience, I know the general perspective of, of where, where they're coming from. Yeah, so I love that. Super helpful. super helpful. So I want to talk about risk because um, there's – Every time we take big leaps and jumps in our lives, there's always a risk. So I know we talked about the financial risk that you've taken and that you've um, had to take on as you've made some certain life decisions. But what were the other risks or the the, the costs of your journey, and were they worth it? Mm. Well, uh, yeah, yeah. You talking about my hair? Oh, <laughs> that could be one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that was worth it. That was worth it. <laughs> Um, uh, sleepless nights. No, I slept so good because I was so exhausted. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, the other risks. Um, yes, uh, I think uh, there were some people in my life that was a risk that aren't in my life anymore. You know, um, uh, I can think of a couple. Um, and that saddens me because I care about people. But some people can't. Um, they, just, they just respectfully and lovingly, they can't. Um, they can't even walk alongside the path that I go, right? Yeah, is, yeah. So relational risk, I guess, in, in that sense, um, which is which is absolutely 
important because I'm a people person. It hurts yeah. me. It hurts me. I'm a pleaser. I'm a people pleaser. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Uh, um, I'm an absolute people pleaser. Um, you know, some some of that. You know, I think the 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 defer. We talk about like deferred benefit, and maybe this kind of kind of says something. I guess um, along the way, not necessarily the risk, but the sacrifices that we made yeah. um, were significantly um, different than the majority of the people around us. Um, you know, such as. Uh, you know, we're raising a family in a 990 square foot townhome still. It's the townhome my wife and I bought, you know, 14 years ago. Yeah. Um, and, and it's not fancy. It's not, you know, we love it. It's home. It's clean. Um, and, and you know, we're in each other's space. All, you know, we're, <laughs> yeah. I can't work from home very, yeah, yeah, very yeah. much. Yeah. Uh, but so, so that's not necessarily a risk, but it is a sacrifice along the way that really has had to, uh, we had, I mean, we had to take, if we, yeah. if we weren't, you know, we've never had a car loan. We've never, we just did things the way that everyone, not, not perfectly, but I think we did, we try to do things the way that the masses are going one way. We look the other way. Right. Yeah, yeah. And, and the masses usually say, Oh, we wish we could do it that way. And we go, yeah, you, you, you can, yeah. you just got to have like commitment and discipline and, and, and so on and so forth. So, can you explain, because I love, um, we've talked about this while writing this book, is um, the term deferred benefit. Can you break that down? Because I love that. Because I think it's an essential tool that everyone, if you want, if you're taking big risks with your life, yeah. that's a concept that you have to both understand and embrace and be okay with. Sure, Because sure. we live in an instant gratification society, so this is totally counterintuitive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll speak to you. Uh, so, so that uh, I always say, if it's quick, it don't stick, right? Mm -hmm. This is just my Mike Zacharyism, if you will. If it's quick, it don't stick. Yeah. Um, my experience, not my opinion, but my experience is that uh, deferred benefit is always greater. So the longer you can defer it, it the greater it is. Um, you know, I, I would, I don't play the lottery because I don't want to win it because I'm not, I, I'm going to give it away because it, it, it's, it's, it's that deferred benefit where you earn it over time. Example, uh, Fieldstone was our landscape company. We built it from zero um, and we built up and in the first like three years, three to five years, but really the first three years, uh, my business partner and I didn't get paid much at all. And we employed people and mind you, we're not sitting on a pile of cash. Our wives both, ironically, our wives both like had the exact same career path, like financially, wow. like we started and they were at like 27,000 and then they went up to like 35 and they got yeah. a raise and like, it was like almost identical. And yeah. so we had very similar paths. Um, but, uh, uh, where was I going? Tell you were getting paid. Thank you. Your thank you. Paid. Thank you. That's why we work together. <laughs> so, uh, so we weren't getting, we weren't getting paid and we, I mean, we had up to like 20 employees, yeah. right? And people are like, you know, family and friends and pastors and all that. Like, Hey man, like you're really stressed. Yeah. yeah. You know, you're, you're eating goulash five days in the week, you know, uh -huh. making a big pot of spaghetti and just eating it every day, but you're employing 20 people. Yeah. And we're like, no, no, no. We're investing back in the business. We'd rather hire someone else than to pay us. So if we had a bill come up and we needed, you know, the car needed fixed 300 bucks, I'd say, Hey, Chris, I need like 300 bucks. So we'd both take a draw and it was, you know, it was skinny, but we, you know, tight on the money side, but excuse me, because of that deferred benefit, right? Mm -hmm. Because of deferring benefit, not taking, not taking, not just soaking the cash out of the business, we exponentially grew and we were able to afford to exponentially grow because yeah. growth costs money, like yeah. significant money. So we didn't have to go way into debt. We had some, but we didn't have to go way into debt as a business. Right. Um, um, so, so, but the interesting thing is, so let's get to the fun part. So then year six, seven, mm -hmm. we've been deferring benefit, deferring benefit. Boom. We're making cash. Like yeah, we're yeah, making yeah. money. Yeah. We're taking it home. Our cars are paid for our, our self. Like we had all these benefits that we were waiting on. And of course, everyone, you know, we used to get, crap for you know like whatever going golfing on a tuesday and yeah. you know whatever but the yeah. point is that i'm like you don't remember like you you don't know what we went through to get here we deferred the benefit so that it would be great like this so we had this massive freedom yeah but the irony is we i got there and enjoyed it for a little while <laughs> yeah like i very much enjoyed that massive benefit that i deferred the first yeah um the the first year or so, it was awesome. And then it was like, okay, I'm not here, I'm here to produce. Like, God's me here to produce for the benefit of other people. Um, and that, that, that's, that's when the, when things started to turn, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. started to, to, to turn in my chest. You know? Yeah. I love that. Um, 
I don't know if I loved it so much. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, was right, right when you got to the benefit, now you are deferring all over again. Yeah, You're yeah, back yeah. in the deferment. Yes, correct. Maybe that's just, and I like what you said, that um, I feel the same way that comfort um, breeds complacency. So it's like when you are uncomfortable on a consistent basis, you you have to grow. Yes. You have to seek out, you know, different um, resources to help you become a better person. You have yeah. to network. You're, if, you know, it's when your bank account is zero and it's all on you to raise it, that's a different kind of hustle, yeah, you yeah, know? Yeah. Um, now, I I know that the the one thing that I asked when we're talking about the journey and like getting to a certain point, I know you talked about purpose and I kind of want to focus on that as one of the major things that you learned along your journey because I know that's your heart and soul. Mm -hmm. So I want you to tell me how purpose has driven your life and how it's become more and more significant as you've gone through your journey. Like, what have you learned about it? And then what are you trying to infuse into other people to learn about it? Yeah, yeah, you think I'm smarter than I am, I think. Those, <laughs> those, are, those are really good. Uh, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very much, uh, I am a purpose-driven individual. You're, you're correct. Yeah. Uh, but I am, I am just getting started in my pur in fulfilling my, my God-given purpose here on Earth. While it's short time, my wife says, you really do live every day like your last. People say that, you really do. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I do, I do. Yeah. I, um, but I'm a purpose-driven individual, but it took me, first of all, it took me a, it took me a long time to figure out what it was, what my purpose was. And, and like a very tangible thing that's helped me, working with you has helped me a lot, um, of reflecting on my past and really pulling out like key components and key, um, when I was happy, and I don't just mean happy as in like yeehaw, but like fulfilled. Yeah. When I felt the best version of myself, like um, when I sit in a, in a um, in, um, if I have to work this afternoon, I have to work behind a computer. Yeah. I need to like strap myself to a chair. <laughs> like me sitting here for this period of time is like really big. I'm trying not to move my hands too much, right? I'm an energetic yeah, yeah, yeah. guy, yeah. but I get in energy from people. My yeah. wife, people would say to my wife, like, oh, how do you deal with all his energy at home? She goes, he's not as energized. Yeah. Like he, he, he could be exhausted and I could show up in a, in a room full of people and now I've got energy, right? So I look back at all these different experiences in my life um, and there's a common theme of that, of that people fulfillment and that in, encouraging others and really speaking truth to them. And uh, uh, which is my purpose. Like that is my purpose. That's what I'm here to do uh, through whatever avenue. And that's what we're working on is different avenues to, 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 to do that. Yeah. Uh, this is one here, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and I'm thankful for it. Um, um, so, so understanding, you know, if I look back 10 years ago or even five years ago, I, I was still figuring out, like I was figuring out what I was supposed to do. Yeah. Right? I was figuring out what I was supposed to do. And there was no like aha moment. That's the thing. It was no aha moment It in itself was a process of figuring it out. Yeah. It's taking time. Reflection is important for me, uh, important to me and, and, uh, and just extracting that information. Um, you know, I'm a very prayerful individual too. That is very helpful. But I, um, yeah, I, I, I implore people, like I'm, I wanna just help, I'm getting off, I'm sorry, but I yeah, really, yeah. I really, for people to understand and know, like if you think like, when is the best version of yourself? Like you really feel, if that's when you go, I feel like super valuable right now, right? Mm -hmm. And and unfortunately, a lot of people don't feel that a lot, and, yeah. and they and they should because they are valuable. But when you feel it, like in that moment, you've got to dig through that. Like you got to dig through that soup and see what ingredients are in there because that in itself, that is where your purpose lies. Like yeah. that is you're acting in your strength, right? Right there. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. I don't know if I answered your question. You but, did. Okay. You did, and that leads me to um, our second to last question. So um, this is where you kind of get a chance to talk directly to the audience um, since you've kind of shared your expertise and what you've been through. Um, I want you to think about somebody that, and that people that are watching are going to probably be through different phases of their life, sure. but just people that maybe want to take a risk, they feel very unfulfilled in their lives, and they think fulfillment's going to come through what you went through. You know, like, I'm going to build a business, or I'm going to yeah. make a whole lot of money, yeah. or, you know, I'm going to get to the point where I don't have to work. But just taking from your story, that doesn't always bring fulfillment. That fulfillment is so much more. So the people who are searching 
for fulfillment right now, like what's what's one or two pieces of advice that you can Yeah, that's a, that's great. Um, so I would say for starters, uh, you said something that was really good. You, you, you essentially saying that like like it's really sexy to grow a business, right? Like, yeah. And it's like you see it and it's flashy, and we had fifty trucks all over town. I see your stuff everywhere, great and wonderful. Yeah. That's cool, and I'm very thankful for that. Yeah. But um, you know what? My mom, my wife is a stay-at-home mom, right? And and she works harder than I do. Like yeah, yeah, yeah. she's busier than I do. I can't even get her on the schedule. I was crazy. <laughs> so um, or get on her schedule. Um, is wherever you're at, like no matter where you are, um, your purpose can be applied. So even when I was at Fieldstone, my purpose could have been applied there. I had a unique path and a unique process to, and and I. Did the right thing. I, I'm thankful for, for what, it, what has happened. But no matter where someone is, um, um, it's it's it could be a different phase of purpose fulfillment. Um, I'll give you an example. We're writing a book. The process of writing a book, man, it's tough. That's why I'm partnering with you. It's not a strength of mine, right? Yeah, but, yeah. but 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 the end result is fulfilling my purpose. Once I'm holding it and handing it to people and teaching what's in there, that is my purpose. But to get there, right? So. So the process to getting getting to understanding your purpose is challenging. Um, the profit, but even once you understand it, to get it out, to do it, you know, the process of getting there is, is challenging. Uh, but just understanding that that no matter where you are, uh, you can fulfill your purpose, right? So yeah. so so like I I'm thankful as well, very thankful that I have I get the attention of entrepreneurs because I am one, um, and I can relate to them. But man, dude. My, my people who are retiring, okay, they want to retire. I'm, I'm too, you know, I got 10 days left, right? Yeah, 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 Counting yeah. the days down, I'm going to retire. I'm, you know, 61 and I'm going to retire. I'm speaking to them too. Like those people, uh, uh, which I love them, I have some of them in my family. I, I was just telling some of them the other day that the statistics are that uh, the average American went after they retire, they die after six years. Wow. That's a purpose issue. Yeah. That's what it is. It is yeah. a purpose issue. Now there are health issues as well, but they're all tied, um, and, and, and uh, it's a purpose issue because we're made to produce something, right? Yeah. We're made to produce something and head towards a goal and head towards a purpose. Um, it, there is a tough balance between contentment as well. Contentment's a tough, tough. Uh, uh, you know, it's tough to understand that I need to keep going and producing, but I also need to be and understand what contentment is. You know, yeah, yeah, and that's where. You know, prayer, meditation, whatever your, your style is, you yeah, know, yeah, helps. Yeah. And and uh, um, uh, but really, just just understand. I, I just repeated. I think understanding that wherever you are, you can fulfill your purpose. Yeah. Um, um, you can live a fulfilled life. Um, I think it's rare. I this is an unfinished thought, mm -hmm. but this this will apply. I think it's rare to that someone's life purpose is about them. Yeah. I, I would. I, I think it's rare. In fact, I would say it probably doesn't exist. Right. That if you're fulfilling your purpose, you're probably serving someone else. Uh -huh. Right? Um, yeah. You're probably um, assisting, oh, wow. pouring into somebody else, a group That's of people, one person, right? yeah. um, So looking, looking, you know, looking at our our purpose as not self-serving, but you know, giving. I mean, when you feel yeah. your greatest, the best version of you is probably when you're giving to someone else. Mm -hmm. You know, when you're yeah. pouring into someone else. I love that. And I think one of the things that you said early on was the, um, the discovery process of finding your purpose is just like looking back over your life, which is why I do what I do in helping people like go through their story because there's so that's where your answers are found. Right. It's like in what you've already experienced, if you take different parts of your story, like even we were going back in his story and we were looking back in high school, you know, yeah. the story you told about, he wasn't the best, academic in high school but because part of his purpose is encouraging other people he was asked to give one of the biggest speeches to at his commencement yeah it, it wasn't because he was so academically sound and had made the <laughs> in, in fact it, when at graduation i had to sit up front where all the the i don't know what they're called cum laude people, yeah, yeah, yeah. the smart people i'm <laughs> sitting up front and my friends are like zachary what are you doing you're gonna get in trouble you're supposed to be back here i'm like no I'm speaking in front of 2,500 people. Yeah, yeah. They're like, you barely graduated. Yeah. Like, literally, almost didn't graduate. And I'm like, yeah, I know, man. But, but yeah. yeah, you're absolutely the right. The evidence of who you are and the, the purpose that you're supposed to fulfill.
to fulfill isn't found in anything else but your story. And I think that that's such an amazing, um, amazing thing that you've discovered for yourself and sure. helping other people. So um, one more thing, um, Mike is very active on social media. He puts out a lot of really great videos, very encouraging. And of course, um, you're definitely going to want to connect him because his book is going to yeah. be coming out. Yeah. It's going to be phenomenal. Yep. So tell them how they can reach you best um, and um, yeah. certain lines of communication that you can open to them. Sure, absolutely. So, so yeah, Facebook, Instagram. I'm heavy on Facebook, Instagram, Mike Thackeray, Mike underscore Thackeray on Insta and uh, Mike Thackeray on on uh, Facebook, uh, you know, we're, I'm working on a lot of projects. I'm, I'm sharing, I'm not one to wait. So I'm sharing ahead of time. I'm working on a website and just some more, just some value adds for people, uh, including the book. I'm excited about that um, as well. So, so uh, yeah, really, I'm most active on Facebook. I'd love to connect with you guys. You know, I've had, I've actually met some really good people, even some entrepreneurs. I was here last week uh, consulting, uh, you know, kind of a business coaching uh, experience which is very good very fun for me i enjoyed that so mm -hmm. so but i'm here i'm accessible reach out i'd love to talk chat do a phone call whatever or just follow me and uh hopefully i can add some value yeah awesome well mike thank you for joining us thank today you. Um, I want to reiterate the fact that um, Mike is just so filled with wisdom. He's just such a wonderful guy. If you have been moved or if you have questions or you just want to connect, that's what this is about. This is a conversation. I feel like social media should not just be a platform where we um, prop up our lives to be what they're not. I think there's value and vulnerability and honesty and connecting to other people on that same level. So definitely reach out. And as always, thank you for joining us. And if you know someone that has an extraordinary story that you think should be shared on a larger platform, please DM me, message me, um, put a comment under here. We would love to hear their story. But have a wonderful day and an even better week.